Your affirmations, aspirations I got shit to do, the aftermath of preparation Good food, good mood, blood in circulation One step at a time, yeah that's how you make it Set a goal you control and the steps you take them I try to pick one thought, have some concentration And if I make a mistake, it's called education I try to do this every day, call it replication Wake up, today's gonna be a good day Wake up, today's gonna be a good day Wake up Today's gonna be a good day. Wake up. 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 Today's gonna be a good day. Life ain't easy, y'all. I think there's a reason, though. Ups and downs, just like every different season, yo Sometimes I'm high, other times I'm barely breathing, though I always gotta fight and hide from the demons, yo Negative thoughts are poison, they ride, uh Head full of flaws, so here come the clouds, uh They'll never stop unless I can swap All the bad for the good in my head when I'm lost, uh yeah, so I'ma fake it till I make it Positive thoughts are overtaken, I got patience One day at a time is how you operate a cadence A flow, you grow, you show yourself a foundation Stay away from all the shit that causes temptation I know that I like to do it cause of sensation I live my life in my head like a narration Don't expect greatness, do my best, man, I'll take it Wake up, today's gonna be a good day Wake up Today's gonna be a good day. Wake up. 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 Today's gonna be a good day. Rogers is a 15 year old autistic boy that went missing from Sumner County, Tennessee, Hendersonville, Tennessee on February 26th, the same day that Madeline Soto disappeared from Kissimmee, Florida. This is a case where this 15 year old autistic boy allegedly got up in the middle of the night and walked out his door and never was seen again. Many people that have uh, autistic children understand that this is a weird um, analysis of what could happen, especially when you have an autistic child that is not a runner, always has his feet covered. Let's leave it like that. He always puts something on his feet to go outside and he just vanishes. There were uh, videos that went out that said that something was flashlights in their backyard. People are looking at the stepfather, Chris, Christopher Proudfoot, because he's had DCS in his life in the past. He's going through a custody battle in New Mexico, uh, which has allegations of spousal and domestic violence abuses inside the home. The Sumner County residents are calling on extra resources uh, to help search and aid in Sebastian's um, return. Nobody knows where Sebastian is. We've got people out. Um, many people believe Chris Proudfoot has something to do with it. So they're running along his path of travel to find out anything, any possible dumping sites for Sebastian. We know we just had the Cajun Navy over there at Riley Strain's case and a TikToker with 92,000 followers is begging for the Cajun Navy to get involved in this case as well. So is it possible? Could Christopher Proudfoot be associated with this? Did he come home that weekend? He's saying that he stayed in Memphis the entire weekend and never came back home uh, to his wife 
or his stepson. Uh, what is your thoughts on this case? I am going out there sometime next week to start aiding in the efforts uh, for the search, as well as bringing my platform to bring awareness to his case. I hope you guys support those efforts, and I will see you guys real soon. From the East Coast to the West Coast, we are everywhere true crime is. We are asking for the public's help. We are searching in the woods. We are doing what it takes here on the Bullhorn Betty channels to find answers to the most alarming cases we have been watching on the news. I can tell you personally that I have traveled this entire country seeking these answers and bringing that content right here to you here on the Bullhorn Betty channels and Bullhorn Betty crime stories. We are happy with the work that we've done. We brought many answers to the public and we have defied mainstream media in our pursuit of the truth in these cases. We will continue to work we will continue to fight for these victims and we will continue to tell their stories here on my channels. Welcome to the Bullhorn Betty brand of channels and the coffee club. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your support. And more importantly, thank you for allowing me to bring these victims stories to each and every one of you advocating for each of these victims. God bless you. God bless America. And more importantly, God bless our victims. Well, good morning, my beautiful people of YouTube and X. It's nice to see you this morning. We have a lot to go over. I'm going to cram it in. I'm hopefully, keep our fingers crossed, hoping I get a call from the mechanic while we're live. I really hope he calls me while we're live. So we'll know what is going on with my car today, right? Um, before we get started, I'm going to go through, say good morning to everybody. And then we're going to go through our Reader's Digest version of uh, the cases and just get you guys up to speed with the cases that are going on that are in the news and some other information before we dive into the main course, which is Sebastian Rogers and all the weird phenomenons going on in that case. Maddie Dawn, it's nice to see you. Teresa, good morning. Bookworm up in the house. And if you guys are over on the crime stories and you cannot comment, come over to the Bullhorn Betty side. I'm trying to wean everybody off the, uh, the crime stories. But we have members there, and, and I, I want to keep it open to the members if they want to go over there and not, you know, be be over here. So just uh, just FYI, if you guys are members of the Crime Stories and you'd like to be with the members, be over there. If you'd like to be with everybody else, be over here. Whatever you guys prefer, we have options. We have options, folks. We have options. Destiny, it's nice to see you. I see you. It's nice to see you here this morning. Beautiful. Amy's up in the house, our beautiful van lady. By the way, thank you for your contribution this morning. Uh, Mermaid, it's nice to see you find the missing children. Good morning. Uh, let today be the day the boy is found. Yes. Praise God. Let's hope he, he is found. Mel B, it's nice to be nice to see you in here this morning. Moonlight Magic. Good morning. Insatiable Lioness. Why? Good morning to you. Princess is up in the house. I'm not sure why this thing keeps going up. TD Dean. Dixie, Kentucky girl. It's nice to see you. Cynthia, our beautiful Sonia. If you guys didn't see the shirt she had for me yesterday, it says, I love Jesus, but I cuss a little. I think she was being deceptive in that shirt, you know, because I, I, I cuss a lot. I cuss a lot. So I don't know. I don't know. I like the shirt, though. I like the shirt. And I love Jesus, right? Don is in here. Good morning. Van lady, beautiful lady, member for three months. Good morning. Um, Pinko, it's nice to see you. Hopefully I said your name right. <laughs> and everybody else that's in here that I missed, just a country girl, it's nice to see you. Lori Lowe, uh, Teresa, it's nice to see you. Audrey, Nani, good morning. Pebbles, good morning. Devil Doll, I see you. Uh, it's me, Jen, good morning. Susiana, MJ, old Rusty's up in the house. It's nice to see you. Memphis Granny, April, good morning. And if Crime Stories Obsessed is out there, good morning, good morning. Um, 
I haven't seen, I don't really pay attention to it. And Crime Stories Obsessed reached out to me. I'm like, hey, I, and I, she's been reaching. I just didn't see it on my messenger. I'm not really, I haven't been really, I've been so busy. I haven't really been in messenger. So I wanted to give her a shout out too. So it's nice to see everybody um, here this morning. The first one we're going to be discussing right now is Elijah Boo. You guys know Elijah Boo's face. I mean, he's a beautiful uh, three-year-old boy that disappeared from Twin Rivers. His mother Katrina Bauer and her boyfriend, Jesse Bang, are behind bars right now, but they're not behind bars for a disappearance or, you know, whatever happened to him. Um, they're behind bars for negligent charges because, that, according to their information, they have determined that they left uh, Elijah Vu, which is this child right there, Elijah Vu in the car on February 16th in the evening in very cold weather. Um, he's not been seen since the 16th. Uh, even though that they reported him missing on the 20th. And then um, they got her, they, they, she's got like several felony counts. Uh, Jesse Vang has one or two, uh, but it seems like they're coming ripped down really hard on the mom, which they should because she's just a, a piece of, you know what. Um, but long story short, he is, um, he's still been missing. Nobody's seen him. And uh, we're just trying to find any information about about him. Now, Katrina just went to court not too long ago. I guess she's going to trial. And all the volunteers that have been out there working, you know, to look for um, Elijah when the family, well, I shouldn't say when the families won't because Elijah has a lot of family members that love him. Uh, a heck of a lot more than the piece of garbages that are in the in jail right now. They don't even want the piece of garbages out of jail right now because they want to know what happened to their grandchild and their family member. But the volunteer searchers were there and they were just, they were crying. They were like, they just want to know. They've, they've spent a month searching for this boy for nothing. They've come up empty handed for a solid month. And um, it's, it's very um, heartbreaking for them. Crystal Rogers case obviously has some a little bit of movement in it. It's not movement uh, other than um, the three defendants. They're they're trying to separ separate their case. Uh, they're also trying to get the um, venue changed. And so I just wanted to read this. The change of venue, the most pressing issue is the request by the prosecutor and the defense for the change of venue right now, both Boyd County, um, which is Ashland, and Davies County, which is Owensboro, have been mentioned. So it looks like they're working on uh, the possibility of changing their venue. And uh, one of the last things before we start talking about our um, main topic of discussion is um, this, this fine. So six of the major, this is related to bonds. This doesn't really have anything to do with our normal run of the mill uh, people that are in our chat, but still, even in 2024, we have major bank organizations uh, being fined and having to settle for large settlements due to fraud and um, uh, collusion, fraud and collusion. And it's just getting very, very sickening because our banks caused us some major problems back when the mortgage, you know, our mortgage bubble bursted and people were facing um, foreclosure and being thrown in the streets. And just, uh, you know, the, the, the cost, this whole cost to the American people, never mind our taxpayer money, um, had, to, had to be given to them, whether we liked it or not. We had no choice over it. You know, um, I, me personally, I'm the kind of person that if you do things that jeopardize your business and you lose your business, you lose your business. Um, that's not, you know, it, it would have affected people, but somebody would have cleaned it up and fixed it up. Uh, if any of us <clears throat> went out there and ran our business in the ground, do you think the government's going to help us uh, prop it up? Of course not. But that's what our government chose to do is to prop up these banks instead of taking them over or having another bank take them over. And then we're not even, you know, uh, 15 years later, they're they're back to the same nonsense and garbage that they once were. And I guarantee they made a hell of a lot more conning people than 70 million dollars. These settlements are jokes. It sounds good to people like me and you because we're looking at it saying, oh, it's $70 million. We've never seen $70 million before. But when you take all of the people that they have jeopardized and the people that lost money that they were able to pocket, 
I guarantee it was a hell of a lot more than $70 million. My thing is, is when you steal money, you should have to pay 100% of that money back plus a massive penalty. So it's so it's so financially destructive that you don't want to do it. This where they can uh, do these types of things, make a billion dollars and have to pay a $70 million fine for it. It's just the cost of doing business. It's just the cost of doing business. So I just thought it was very important to bring this up to you because, I mean, we don't we don't really talk about financial stuff here. But, you know, I do want people to be uh, in the know of everything that I find personally interesting. And if I find it personally interesting, heck, you guys might find it personally interesting. So I um, I brought it forward. So here is a message from um, Seth Rogers, coming from Seth Rogers, the father of missing Sebastian Rogers. The Cajun Navy will now be leading the search for my son, Sebastian Wayne Drake Rogers. I need you to be res to, to respectfully keep your distance and do not interfere, interfere with their search efforts, their dogs, their vehicles, and their search areas. I do respect everyone's help, and the United Cajun Navy is taking the burden off my shoulders. Please allow them the ability to complete their tasks professionally. So um, I know that everybody has been really happy that they're there. Everybody has, um, from my personal knowledge, has been absolutely, utterly um, respectful. Now, I will say, um, as you guys watched my video, one of the reasons why I didn't come live right on time this morning is because I did a live on TikTok and I dropped that video. It was a 40-something minute video. And usually if I do a live right after dropping a video, my notifications don't go out. So I had to wait a couple hours. So I made sure that the, all the notifications uh, went out appropriately. And, um, you know, I, this is my only thing. I, I think the Cajun Navy, the idea of the Cajun Navy, these, these um, you know, uh, normal Joes coming together and creating an outfit that went out there and helped search for people in natural disasters. You know, I'm all about that. You guys know, uh, I think that's amazing. Uh, you know, a lot of great people start off by doing stuff, not because it's an easy thing to do, because it's the right thing to do. Um, the problem I have with the Cajun Navy predominantly is, is I, I, every time he comes on the TV, every time he has a press conference, he downs social media. And I'm sorry. That's, that's inappropriate, it's unprofessional, and I'm getting sick and tired of it, especially coming from an organization that has uh, reached their desired um, level due to social media. Like nobody would know who the hell the, Navy, the, the, the United Cajun Navy is if it wasn't for social media. So this constant dogging of social media by the Cajun Navy, I can tell you for me personally, is not well taken. Um, you know, maybe that's not their intention. Okay, well, then somebody needs to speak to Mr. Flag because every time that man goes to the podium, it is always something about social media. And I'm sorry, we're exactly, Mike, we're here to stay. I mean, we're not going anywhere. And you can either piss us off and we can all be feuding because you won't you won't stop being rude and nasty to social media, which is giving this boy a huge platform to be seen and advocate for. Every time I see Mr. Flag, let me say this, he's always wanting those interviews, aren't isn't he? He's always making sure he follows up. If you would like a private interview, if you'd like a private interview, if you'd like a private interview, if you'd like a private interview, okay, David, well, we get it, okay? We understand you like so, you like mainstream media. Us younger folks are social media. So, um, you know, no disrespect. Um, I'm not going to show you the same disrespect that you showed me, but I'm hopeful that maybe uh, moving forward, the, the United Cajun Navy can be a little more considerate and a little more respectful of their, their upcomings because that's where they got their upcomings from, social media. <clears throat> Sebastian Rogers is a 15-year-old autistic boy that has been missing since February 26. Um, the endangered child alert has been issued on behalf of Sumner County Sheriff's Office for Sebastian Wayne Drake Rogers. Sebastian is a 15-year-old white male, 5'5", 
Um, 120 pounds, brown hair, brown eyes. Sebastian was last seen on February 26th in the area of Stafford Court in Hendersonville, Tennessee, wearing a black sweatshirt, black sweatpants, and glasses. Sebastian has medical condition that may impair his ability to return safely without assistance. If you have seen Sebastian or information regarding his whereabouts, please contact the Sumner County Sheriff's Office at 615-451-3838 or TBI at one 800 TV I find. So there is your disclaimer on the boy that we are talking about right now. This is Sebastian Rogers, again, a 15-year-old autistic boy that disappeared under the care of his mother. Um, the story related to how um, this young boy disappeared is a, um, is a little skewered. Uh, it's not making sense. We've got a lot of issues coming from the parents, um, uh, the Proudfoots. This is his mother, Katie Proudfoot, and the stepfather, uh, Chris Proudfoot, but as you can notice, the problem here is that Chris was displaying a lot of scratches, bruises, and other markings on him when he gave that first initial interview. And when he was on Smiley's World, he told people that it was the dogs, the, the Yorkies, that scratched his arm up because they, they had just got um, uh, their nails sharpened. But I wanted to make sure that I showed you guys something because... One thing you're not going to get from Yorkies is bruising. And I don't know if you can see this area right here. There is a massive bruise here and a massive bruise here on Chris Proudfoot's arm. You're not going to get you're not going to get these types of bruising from dogs scratching you. You can clearly see the bruising pattern here and it almost looks like somebody that went something like this. Let me show you again. That went something like this, where they had somebody and they went like this. I don't know why, but that's what that's what's coming to my mind. Does it make it so? It doesn't make it so, y'all. Just doesn't make it so. But he's got some significant bruising and patterns on his arms that are making us uncomfortable, especially in light that they're this they're there's his stepson that was in his home disappeared. Now, he's stating that he did not come home that weekend. I call bullshit on that. I, I, I haven't found anybody that has said that he has been home, but something happened here. And I don't know. Katie just doesn't seem like the person that would have, have, have done it. But I don't know Katie. I don't know this man either. I just know their story stinks to high heaven. And I also wanted to bring, is it this one? Hold on, let me go to the... There it is. And I wanted to read this to you. It says, I live in the neighborhood. I wanted to confirm a couple of things I have I have seen posted today. I received a message on Thursday to watch their house as there could be LE headed to the house. That sounds like, like somebody I know uh, that would be putting that out there. Sorry, I didn't mean to do that. I was just trying to, um, there we go. Hopefully you guys, yeah, you guys can see it. So uh, I received a message on Thursday to watch my house so there because there would be Ellie headed to the house. Where my house is located, I cannot see the front of their house, but I have a clear view of the entrance of our neighborhood and in Stafford and into Stafford Court. I also have friends over there that I reached out to. As we all began to watch, I began to notice random SUVs driving up uh, uh, Kellen Lane, a turnaround onto Devon Court cul-de-sac and go back down Kellen Lane, turning onto Stafford Court and then leave. This happened several times. I noticed that about five plus SUVs doing this over about 30 minutes to an hour time span. It was very odd. I had a feeling something was up. I confirmed with two neighbors that at least two of their vehicles were in fact undercover agents I was told uh, two stopped at the house and went in. They are definitely surveilling them and what it feels like the entire neighborhood. I can also confirm that Chris hooked up his camper, or hooked his camper up to his truck this afternoon and left. Katie followed him. I have no idea where they went. As of about two hours ago, neither have returned. I would also like to add, unless you live here, you have no idea what, uh, what we've all been through. I don't mean that selfishly, but
But if you are on the uh, on the track that the crowdfoots know what happened, you you understand why I mean by the what I mean by this. We are a small neighborhood that has always been very quiet. We've never been through anything like this. This has shaken us to our core. We all have felt safe up until now. We are all we are all on edge. We don't know what happened in that house. The more I hear from good, reliable sources. The more I'm sick. If Sebastian was hurt in that house, that happened right under our noses and no one realized it. That's disgusting. The idea that the Proudfoots hurt that child in the house in our neighborhood calls, causes all of us a great deal of pain and unsettling. I meet with a few of our neighbors today. We all feel disgusted by what, by what has happened and what may have happened. This has rocked us and has changed how we feel now. We don't feel safe right now, especially us women. As parents, we are sickened by this. Whatever happened, happened around us. We are all sickened by all of this. Mostly we are heartbroken for Sebastian, Seth, and his family. I kept asking, how did we not know? How could this have happened right here in front of us? And lastly, the rumors going around about someone in our uh, someone in our neighbor ha having an affair with Katie. Just so you all know, none of us ever suspected that and have no idea who it is. Well, the ones I have spoken to had no idea. I don't believe that rumor. I've, I've stated that publicly. I think that's just that rumor. And then with all of this, guys, going on. In, in and around the Proudfoots, you hear the sentiments of the neighbors in that community. Uh, we have the searches. We know Chris Proudfoot said he couldn't search because law enforcement told them to stay inside the home, yet he and, and Katie could go out to a dinner but not go, go out to search for their missing child that was missing from their home. And when they found out the biological father, Seth, was out there looking, they went out and tried to have the search shut down. I truly do believe, I think everybody su suspects that it was Chris Proudfoot that called it in, that they were searching on federal land. Now, we don't know that for a truth. It's just a hinkering suspicion. It doesn't make it so. Um, but we definitely know that he did threaten the biological father of, of Sebastian, the only one, the only real family member looking, the only parent looking for this child. He threatened him with a lawsuit for the GoFundMe. The biological father, the stepfather threatens to sue the biological father because he's trying to raise money to keep up his search efforts. And then what do the Proudfoots do? Still no help searching for Sebastian, told not to leave the home, but they can leave the home to go eat and they can certainly leave the home to run away. Uh, but they can't seem to find five, five minutes uh, of their time, of their busy, busy schedule, sitting home uh, while law enforcement and everybody else does this work. They have no problem whatsoever sitting at home and saying they can't leave, but every opportunity they do get to leave, it's for self-serving and self-preservation purposes and has no benefit to locate or find Sebastian Rogers, which again, uh, disappeared under their watch. <clears throat> so there's kind of the case in a nutshell. And when you look at it in that lens, it really does not look good for the Proudfoots. I don't think there, I mean, we may have some people that are just still, you know, they haven't seen any smoking gun yet and may say, you know, they're just adamant that I'm not going to make a decision on how I feel about them until we have some more evidence. I absolutely respect you for your decision um, related to that. However, with that being said, I have enough information for me to say this is odd behavior. Um, these parents are looking guilty, not because I think they're guilty. I don't want them to be guilty. As a matter of fact, um, I really wanted them 
I really wanted this to be something else completely, you know, a kid prank, um, you know, something else, but that just doesn't seem to be the case. Um, I was very careful when it came to this, to this particular case, um, and, and Madeline Soto's case, you know, I, I, I feel like these two cases have been very complicated. They've had very complicated situations in them. And I've really wanted to take my time and really decipher what I feel is going on in it. My position with Madeline Soto so far hasn't changed. I'm really disheartened that after all of this time, uh, they still haven't even charged um, um, Stefan Stearns with her disappearance or her death, whether or not her mom's going to be charged uh, or not. I'm just still in shock that nobody's been charged in Maddie's. I mean, she was found. They have to have some type of preliminary evidence that leads them to him. Um, his behaviors, you know, we know what was on his phone. It just makes sense. Um, so I'm a little disheartened over, over that. But I've been very careful with the Madeline Soto case, as well as the Sebastian Rogers case, because of the complexities in these issues. But with the Sebastian Rogers case, the parents have made some critical and crucial mistakes that were so glaring. And I know they didn't mean them, but that's why we keep them constantly coming back and answering questions because we know the truth will never change. And if they're lying, they're going to start changing their story because you, you can only lie for so long. And when you're when you're having to explain this to the people and audience and then law enforcement is calling, coming at back to you and saying, wait a minute, why did you do this? Or what is this about? And now you have to change that story to law enforcement. And so when then you, then you come here to social media and you're changing your story to social media, the difference is, is we call like law enforcement may keep that crap to their chest. We call that out publicly. We call that out immediately. We call that out to publicly. You've got people that have nothing better to do with their time than literally go through every single thing in these people's lives and and report those things back to um social media that's all they do you know some of these people are great investigators and are bedridden you know um and this is what they do this is what they do to help their community to help these missing person cases and they tear um, they, they, they go into these people's lives. They rip them upside down. I mean, some, most of these people don't even know that their, their, their lives are being literally picked apart behind the scenes, but we get information. Um, it, it really does irritate law enforcement because some of this stuff does go to directly to the integrity of their investigation. Um, and it sucks, but you know, it's, it's in the public eye. It's fair game. We're not, we're not doing anything wrong. We're not going and, and getting private information and sharing that. All this stuff is publicly found because that's what the whole purpose of cyber sleuths are. It's all the publicly um, available information online, you know? So I did want to give you guys one other thing that, that's not related to um, Sebastian Rogers, and it's related to Riley Strain. Uh, we hear that there is the preliminary autopsy is in. And there's no signs of foul play related trauma or anything associated with his death. And it's still considered accidental. They still haven't released the toxicology report. So we're probably going to be getting a full report about 90 days or so. We still want to just make sure we say a prayer for the Strain family. I got to tell you, out of all the cases, we cover kids and everything. And there's a lot that pull at my heartstrings. But Riley's mom, you know, it's... It's um, there's just something about his mother that just makes me just wanted to come through that um, computer and just hold her and just hold her and just hold her and hold her and hold her and try my hardest to take the pain that I know will never be taken away from her. But it was just, yeah, you know, even though it was an adult kid, that that case, oh, oh, that case got me, you know, it really did. Um, and it's not just the story about the son. I mean, it's sad about the son, but it, for me, it was mom. Mom, mom got me so emotionally drawn into this case, just feeling her pain, hurting for her. You know, it, it, it was mom. It was all mom for me. It was all mom for me. Um,
We're also finding out that there's security cameras. I'm seeing something here posted by somebody on X. I don't know who this person is. Uh, Mila, Kyla, or whatever. I don't know what it is. And uh, they're saying that my theory, sincere, apologize if I'm wrong. Things are only starting to bloom. There were two lights in the security vote uh, video at approximately 3.10 a.m. Cell phones, in my opinion, one chasing after the other catches, oh, maybe cell phones instead of flashlights. Interesting. After the other catches up to the first one, maybe because the first guy is barefoot, Sebastian. Then maybe he picked up the boy and throws him over his shoulder, hence only one light now. Calls yeah. him back to the house or more likely to the construction site where he parked and stayed off cameras by the house. Um, you know, I'm going to have to go to that construction site. I need to see the proximity of that. I think he rushed home after a call around 10 to 12 a.m. and got there to be in security video by the three-ish mark. That is possible. And I said that, you know, but then that would imply that whatever happened, Sebastian's mom did it. You see what I'm saying? Like if Chris rushed home at that time of night, he didn't rush home to go and off this kid. He rushed home because something happened in that home and, and Katie's calling him screaming. Oh, Crypt Keepers. It's nice to see you. I haven't heard, I haven't heard from you. Oh boy. It's been a little while. It's nice to see you, Love Bug. I hope you're doing well. So that does kind of bode in with my um, theory that he did, He if he didn't come home that weekend, that he came home around that time because Katie said she went to bed at 12. And I thought that was funny because with the 12 o'clock, he could have been home. He could have taken care of business and got back in time for work at that 12 midnight time frame. So no matter how you play it, either way, Chris could have done this. If he went to, if he was at the work and didn't come home that weekend, or if he was at home that weekend, if he was at home, there's just too many scratches on his arms. Something happened to that man. Something happened to that man that, that caused those, uh, those scratches. Uh, some, some kind of escalation, maybe over chores, food, bedtime, who knows? I think a neighbor said a door was open all day. Maybe he was blaming and scolded about the heating bill been uh, punished by being locked out in the cold without shoes to teach him a lesson, maybe why the garage light was on. So these are hypotheticals that some people are throwing out there uh, related to Sebastian. But one of the key details that really got me off the fence, um, and I just want to let you guys know, the uh, phone lines are open. If you guys have, uh, let me make sure that they're ringing. Hold on a second. Let's see. Um, so, and the number 724-249-6140, it's at the top there. Um, I, I, you know, I, I'm just curious because one of the things that got me off the fence with Sebastian's parents is, well, first of all, I, I, I didn't really believe their initial story. Okay. I, I will be absolutely honest with you. You guys can go back to my very original um, live. I didn't believe their story. I even told my audience because it was the same day that the behavior panel was going to be doing their um, assessment of the initial video that they gave, the one in the green shirt, uh, the one we saw the scratches and stuff on, on his arms. That was going on. And then the next day, I remember being just so flabbergasted that I was so off from the behavior panel. And I kept explaining, I, like, I'm sorry. I just, the behavior panel to me is wrong, but they're the professionals and I didn't know how to handle it. And, you know, when I say that, you know, this stuff, I get back some backlash for it because they, they're, they're professionals, even though I've been in Chase Hughes course, but they're professionals at it. So I, 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 you know, I, I look at them and I, I was conflicted. And I even said that to my, my audience, because I'm so strongly that I thought that they did something. And then, you know, the Chase Hughes, you know, the, the behavior panel came out. And so I thought, you know, with all the stresses that I've been under, maybe I just didn't, maybe I've missed some cues or whatnot. And I don't think it is. I just think the behavior panel was wrong and they missed the cues. And I know that's a bold statement from Bullhorn Betty, especially since they're they're the top of their 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 field. But I'm sorry, they're they're humans, so it doesn't make them perfect. 
And I, but I second guessed myself and I kept watching and kept watching. And I'm like, well, you know, um, if I look at this analytically, does this prove anything? No, it doesn't. Does this prove anything? No, it doesn't. But now that the, she's changed her story, she's at a third person in, you know, it appears that she indicated that he was home. I want you guys to look at this because it looks like, it almost looks like she, uh, she thought he was home. Or it almost implies that he was home because he says something about the the cousin. This is the third person. Like when we first heard the interview when he was in the green shirt, he never they never talked about the cousin. They never talked about a third person being with him. It was just her and and him. It was just her, her and Sebastian. And so now having the cousin in, but it was how she looked over at Chris. It's as if. He knew she went and picked up and what time. He, now, how would he know that if he's not there? Okay. Let me see what we got. Thank you. Uh, give me a second. Oh, that's wonderful. Oh, in the press conference. Okay. Hold on a second. Give me just a second, guys. I forgot there was a press conference for Becky Hill. She's got a statement that she's made, and I know Brian Enton was flying out there yesterday. Um, so I know I have a funny feeling she's stepping down. I have a funny feeling she's stepping down, yeah. I do. And, and you know what? She probably should because, to be honest with you, um, let's see what this has. Becky Hill breaking the Kirk Report double mistrial have press conference today. To possibly announce a resignation. Yep. Hill told staff members last night she would be stepping down from her role according to local reports. So we'll just go over here. Let me share this screen so you guys can hear what I, I, I know she's stepping down. I'm not going to really listen to it, um, to be honest with you, because I was there. I was at the court hearing. I watched Becky Hill lie to a freaking judge. Like, how dare you? Uh, if you can if, communicating with jurors, if if you if you can if you can um, lie to a judge, like that's just there's certain things that you just don't do, and I I can tell you from 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 just I know judges. Okay, I, I'm a political person around here, so I've been I've known judges. I've 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 helped in campaigns. For, to elect judges. So I've had a lot of time and opportunity to speak with judges. The one thing is, is you guys got to remember, you know, whatever, whatever job you do every day, you're probably an expert at your job. Okay. If you're an accountant, you know, when one penny is off, right? It's the same thing for a judge. When you are a judge, you can smell bullshit a mile away. OK, when you are a judge, you literally have heard every excuse in the world. You know, it, it, there's no purpose in lying. You make a mistake. Just tell the judge, listen, I effed up because there's no point in lying. There's just no I, 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 I just found there's no point in ever lying to a judge. It does you no good and it gets you horrible points. And not only that, if you don't think there's something behind the scenes that some, when you go before another judge, they don't see that you lied to another judge. I, I call bullshit on that too, because I guarantee that there is. There is a little black book back there. There's a black book. News to tell you about now is we're learning that Becky Hill, the clerk of court in Colleton County, South Carolina, who worked the Alec Murdoch case, will be announcing her resignation today at 11 a.m press conference. According to some local reporting, Becky Hill informed her staff last night about her resignation and Court TV has reached out. Her team would not comment on the pending announcement. We know that Hill has come under fire for allegedly communicating with jurors about Alec Murdoch during his murder case. And we're going to be covering the press conference here on Court TV live as soon as it begins. Again, 11 a.m. is the set start time. You know what? Well, well, let's just, we will go over to Court TV. Why not? Hold on a second. Um, Because they're going to be, they're going to be running it live. Might as well. We'll have. I'll pull it up while we we'll, while we talk about Sebastian Rogers. And when it comes live, we'll 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 watch it and see what uh, Becky Hill has has to say.
Usually it doesn't show my whole screen like that. Why is it going through my whole screen like that? Do I have this set up wrong? Hold on a second. Okay. Well, whatever. I didn't like how it was showing that. Uh, so right now, um, <clears throat> it's not live. So I will uh, monitor this. Who else is out there in Colton County? Hold on. If there's a, if there is another link that you guys know of, because it's going to be coming in 22 minutes, so I would let me check. Um, And I believe News Nation is out there too. So I'm just gonna, I'll dive, I'll dive, um, you know, we'll, we'll go over there. If we catch it, we catch it. Um, well, no, not actually lucky break because it didn't affect, it didn't affect Alec Murda at all. He's not getting a new trial because the jurors all basically stated that whatever she said did not change. Excuse me. Their decision wasn't, wasn't based upon her statements. Their decision was based upon the evidence produced at trial. And that's what they all said on the stand while highly inappropriate. Well, this is the first thing I, 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 she lied to the judge. It doesn't, it doesn't matter, you know, if, if she had done it or not, because it didn't, it didn't go to the heart of the case. It didn't affect their judgment of the case, their verdict of the case, if you will. But for her to lie to a judge on top of everything else she did, I, 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 I lost, you guys heard me. I mean, I was out there with um, uh, you know, uh, Jim Griffin and Dick Harpoolian. And, and it was like, you know, how did you guys learn of this? Because I, I would not have believed it. I, I believe you now, you know, and it's sad, you know, <laughs> of course, <laughs> Jim and his smart ass comment to me. <laughs> Don't worry, Jim. I still love you. I still love you. Um, but yes, I do believe I do believe um, she mishandled herself. I think she was overzealous. I didn't true. I truly did not believe it. They had to make a believer out of me, and uh, they did. And I think they made a believer out of a lot of people because the people that have watched that lady work, which I did, I was there at the at, at his trial. I know her behavior and her mannerism. And then to see her up on that stand and you could tell, literally, I saw her. Like, you know when somebody's lying. And she knew she was lying. And she knew that the judge knew she was lying. And she still did it anyways because she did not want the record to reflect the truth coming out of her mouth. And if you lie about your conduct, then you knew it was wrong. And you did it anyways. Because people that don't think their conduct is wrong are like, yeah, I did that. No big deal. No harm, no foul. Right? But when you lie about the conduct, you, you know you shouldn't have been doing it. And I watched that lady lie and lie to everyone. So, yes, thank you. And thank you, B-Betty. Mm. I got a ding-dong. I love the coffee club. You guys are amazing. I just want to say that this morning when I was going live on TikTok and the doorbell ring, for whatever reason, I knew. I'm like, it's got to be coffee. It's got to be the coffee club and it's be Betty. I love you, girl. Mm, good, good. Um, uh, Becky should have been fired. No pension. Uh, yeah, you know, I, I think I, I, she probably is resigning so she doesn't have to deal with the um, criminal aspect. I don't know. I don't know. She should have resigned before this. I mean, as soon as she walked out of that hearing, um, that motion for new trial, she should have just, just quit. She should have just quit right then. Like I was, I got to tell you, me personally, I was shocked. There's no other expression. Because I, uh, you guys know me, I absolutely didn't believe it. I had her back, had her back, had her back until her son got arrested for the wiretap. Once her son got arrested for the wiretap, 
That was it for me. Because I know country boys, I know country boys are not going to do a damn thing without their mama's approval. And he ain't going to cross this line with his mama being the clerk. I'm sorry. I know country boys. There was no way. And I said that there is no way that boy did that all by himself. His mother knew. His mother knew, his mother knew, his mother knew. And if his mother knew, that means she doesn't mind doing some dirty shit. And if she doesn't mind doing some dirty shit, then she definitely could have been, uh, definitely could be doing the stuff that, that she's being accused of. But it wasn't until, until Colt got arrested for the wiretap, that was it for me. That, that you know, there's certain things, like even with Chris and, and Katie Proudfoot, it, it, right when she changed her story, that's it for me, right? I didn't even notice the scratches on his arms. It was other people that noticed that. I didn't even notice the scratches on his arms, but I noticed the lie. I heard the lie before I heard about the scratches. Then you couple the, the, the lies, the changing of the story, the adding a third person, the taking the trip around the block, the taking the trip to the school. And now we have scratches all up and down his arms. That's it. I'm done. And then you go and tell me that he, you can't leave your house to go search, but you can leave your house to go have barbecue. I have a problem with that. Then you tell us that you that law enforcement, oh, don't be mad. Law enforcement is telling us to stay here. And the minute that you get to leave, you actually freaking leave. You leave a 15-year-old autistic missing son behind. And you just tell that boy to kick rocks. You don't give a shit about him or where he's at or what happened to him. These are actions of guilty people. I don't care what anybody says. Beat me up. I'm not saying they're guilty. Their actions are. Their actions are. I just found out Dolly Vision is heading down to, we've got multiple creators in the community covering this case. You know, I got to tell you, hearing this stuff just makes me so happy because, you know, when we first started doing this, we got beat up so bad by social media because they didn't understand the purpose of our mission. And I think after being on the platform for three years, people are really starting to see our, our mission. And it's not just coming here and, and talking about, it's really giving back to these communities and making people tune into their case because if people are just looking at their photo and passing by, it's not doing it justice, but you give them a reason to stop and look and pay attention. Now they're remembering the boy's name. Now they're remembering the details of the case. Now they're remembering to pass his name around. Now they're getting emotionally involved and actually becoming a warrior for this victim. And so that's what it creates with being boots on the ground. Never mind having so much better, so much better. You know what, Phoenix? You are an unstable woman, okay? I can't fix your kind of problems. I really can't. I would tell you to go seek mental help because you, of all people, should be ashamed of yourself with the nastiness that comes out of your mouth. Don't sit here and tell me you're for a freaking victim when you have no problem mentally, verbally, and, and, and emotionally abusing someone you don't even know. I've seen your post. You've got some major problems, young lady. Some major problems. I don't even know why you follow me if you hate me so fucking much. You know why? Because you got to screw loose. Go fix your problems. Go fix your problems. Um... So, you know, when we came out here and uh, started this, people beat us up. But look at look at it now. We've got Pascal's show going out and getting involved. We got Dolly Vision. Dolly Vision, when we started this crusade, didn't even get on a plane. Didn't even get on a plane. Hold on a second. Let me go over here to this side. Oh. We got but her fetties in Twitter. Aw. Aw. Little babies. Little babies. We got somebody up on the bad side of the bed today, didn't we? I love it. I love it. I'm already pissing in your Cheerios and you're making my day. <laughs> I just want to know. I just 
just want to know, do you ever get angry by being so idiotic and stupid? Oh, oh, that's right. You guys like that SF investigate that likes to search for people and force parents to pay $2,000 to get their kid back. Oh, and the one that goes and hunts down parents when they don't want to work with them and tells them they're going to expose them. That's right. You want that piece of shit garbage PI licensed. Yes, but his practices are pretty disgusting. So you like him over people that actually go out and work. And you call me the problem. <laughs> this is me rolling up. This is your boy rolling up. What? <laughs> Okay, big difference. And don't you find it funny that he always has to attack women? Can't keep a woman. You wonder why. Because he's so abusive to women. Verbally, mentally, emotionally abusive. And you want to support him? You make me sick. I bet you if you find women, you'd find out he's an abusive man. Hmm? But no, he wants to attack young professionals like Chronicles of Olivia because he's not getting enough attention for his bruised ego and his little penis. I talked to his girlfriends. Maybe he needs to go sue them. They got a lot to say. <laughs> Just saying. Just saying. But you know, Dolly's in town. And I got to say, you know, Dolly used to never even get on a plane, right? He never even got on a freaking plane. He was so scared shitless to even get on a plane. And look at him. Look at him. He's, he's going all over. He's going all over the place, right? He's going all over the place. And so um, I find it awfully funny um, that we now have inspired a lot of people. It is amazing. It is so amazing to me. And you know what's even more amazing to me is that by us doing great work, you have pieces of shit here on, on, on Twitter, apparently. They're filled with a lot of trolls. Don't worry, babies. I'm going to go back and block every last one of you. Um, but, you know, you've got these people that actually want to hinder somebody actually physically getting out there and doing a physical contribution like clearing an area because their friend can't go out because they're too selfish and self-absorbed to spend one dime without conning a family, a needy family out of money. Um, so there is that, you know, everybody tries to say we grift. I don't know how because we give back to these families and we've got literally families upon families that can say the support that they receive from this channel. And I'm sorry. You're going to have to compete with that. And it's not all about words and talking down about people. You don't hear me talk down about people. I'll talk I'll, I'll talk down about people once they talk about me, but you don't see me talk because I don't need to talk about people to do good. I don't need to talk about people to be me. Oh, wow. I didn't know that either. That's sad. So we are, we are changing. Don't lie. Amy, you have no idea what the hell you're talking about. You know what? Go, go, go to go, go to a doctor. Go to a doctor. But that's all it's about, right? Just hold on. Let me get over here and, and take care of some of these assholes. Um, where are we? So we have Amy, right? We got Amy in here. Let's go over here. See what we got in our chat over here. There we go. There you are, honey bunny. There you go. Okay, since you don't like me and you can't control your own bad behavior, let me go ahead and take care of you right now. And good morning. And I'm so sorry, Tammy, that you have to be there with all these butt hurts in, in the chat. So if it gets too much for you, let me know. I'm monitoring it and I will be blocking the people um, as needed. Uh, we, we have one rule here and it's don't be a Richard. If you can't be kind, it's time for you to move on. But you know what? There's so many, so many mental basket cases out there that can't control their own selves and don't even know how, physically can't even, can't even change the channel. They're so absorbed in hate and being nasty that they don't even realize they're the problem. It's, it's, it's almost a disease. It's kind of, I hope, I hope they get help for it. I can't fix everybody. But what we can do is we can advocate for victims like Sebastian Rogers, and we can definitely provide support for 
uh, searches and other efforts like that. And it's in Tennessee. It's in Tennessee. So we have a lot of love from Tennessee. Uh, what do we got here? Oh, hold on. Let me read this. Okay, so here's a, um, a message. I'm going to go ahead and read this message here. Um, let me see. Do we have any more? If you guys, uh, and, and mods, let me know if you guys see any more um, garbage coming in from, oh, I actually don't think you guys can see the garbage coming in from uh, Twitter, but I can, and that's okay. I'll just, I'll just um, delete them and block them. There we go. All right. So I think I got the whoever blocked, so that's at least good. Okay, so here's what we're just receiving. Hopefully I can read it. I, it's small print and <laughs> my eyes aren't that great anymore. So it says the United Cage, need, is this from today? Are you sure? They just told everybody to, that they don't need any more help. Uh, the search for Sebastian update. The United uh, the United Cajun Navy needs volunteers. Volunteers will help law enforcement find Sebastian. UCN has brought in search dogs since Saturday, and we will bring in more. Recently, online social media groups were walking around through the area with no set plan other than live stream searching. And with no officials, some of these searchers were crossing into federal restricted property and individuals' private property without permission causing issues. But some county officials have raised concerns over volunteer searches um, in regards to safety, resident complaints, over, over trespassing searches, searchers' possibility, compromising evidence that may surface, and maintaining the integrity of the case in regards to much being broadcasted live on social media, i.e. questioning potential witnesses, finding an impartial jury, etc. This happens in every case, okay? It's called freedom of the press. It's called being an American citizen and being able to move freely uh, across America, whatever. But uh, as a reminder to these people searching live, let's get together. Let's not live stream search efforts constantly. It's about finding Sebastian, not likes and shares. There it is again from the fucking Cajun Navy. There it is again, criticizing social media yet again. Let me ask you, Cajun Navy, because let me tell you, it was social media that found evidence in the Riley Strain case, not the fucking Cajun Navy. It was the searchers, not the Cajun Navy, that found possible blood tape, whatever, out there. Cajun Navy wasn't even there. They had to be called in and bring their dogs over. They're going to piss me off with this nonsense with social media and badgering social media constantly. There it is again, though, right? How the hell do they get their funding? I'm just curious. Do they get grants, federal grants? Because these social media creators are spending money and coming from across the country. Are they not allowed to live stream now? Do I have to ask? Uh, whatever Mr. Flag's name is for permission to live stream on my channel. You've got me messed up, man. If you think I'm coming in there and asking your permission for shit, I don't work for you. But I'm happy to work with you as long as this kind of shit right here knocks it off. I'm happy to call you and say, here's where I'm going. I'm happy to provide you maps because I've been searching for, for the last few years. awareness <laughs> we're asking these groups to stand down 24 hours to allow us to get organized grid plan of action and proper permission to search including coordination with federal nothing we do is stopping the cajun navy from doing shit you do your job we'll do our job how about that i don't answer to these people and neither does any other content creator out there Uh, we are also asking anyone previously searched for Sebastian to send the United KG Navy a message with the results or advice and concerns. 
United uh, Cajun Navy asks that anyone who is involved or wants to be involved in the search for Sebastian to send us a message and let's organize. Oh, no, because I don't ask permission. I'll be happy to call you and organize. The minute you tell me what I can and cannot be doing, that's when we stop working together. I will tell you that right now. If I've got to be very clear to everybody, including the family, I don't work for anybody. And I'm not going to be told what I can and cannot do or where I can and cannot go. The only people that have permission to do that for me is law enforcement. I have no problem. If they say, tell me not to go somewhere, I won't go somewhere. Yeah, he's a blowhard. He is. This ain't going to get, this ain't get, this is, this is not going to turn out well. If they're going to keep dogging social media, I'm going to tell you, social media will come back up and bite them in the ass. And I'm not saying that for me. I don't have no qualms with it. I could care less. I'm going to do my thing regardless. But there's other people out there that are going to start running interference if he keeps this up because they're going to get pissed off that they're they're being drug into this because this one Yahoo doesn't like social media that he uses to advertise his own organization. I don't work for the Cajun Navy. Um, some of these searchers are on federal, uh, some of these ser search areas on federal property is in an area that we heavily, uh, destroyed from recent tornado, that were heavily destroyed from recent tornadoes and wind damage. These areas need to be thoroughly combed in an organized manner with proper permission, leave no stone unturned. Um, let me just tell anybody and any, pol and if I got to go down to city hall, I will, I will, I'm happily, uh, taking care of myself 100%. I'm happy to sign a hold harmless agreement. Um, you know, uh, which is basically saying I will not, uh, hold anybody, government officials or the county or the community harmless of any liability. If I go out there, break my leg, break my neck or kill myself, nobody can sue the city, state or county that I'm in. I'm happy to give you that. I'm happy to give you that. Um, we need the social media world to do their thing and help us organize volunteers to come help. Oh, within your requirement, I, I can't, I can't with this Cajun Navy. They, they've lost my interest. So we'll be out there on Wednesday. Uh, God bless the Cajun Navy for their efforts. I hope that they get, uh, the volunteers that they need. I'll be doing a separate, uh, a separate, um, search. Um, again, I don't ask permission. Uh, I'm well bodied and, and have done many searches in the past and um, perfectly capable of, of locating areas and doing it. Now, if they want to chill out with being disrespectful to social media, I'm happy to coordinate with them. Um, but this idea that I work for them or somehow I'm required to, they got me fucked up. <laughs> Just want to let everybody know, I got, that ain't happening, okay? That ain't happening. It ain't happening. Presser time. Thank you. Susie Anna keeping me. She's cracking that with my boy and Betty today. I like it. I like it. I don't see it. It must be on the um, it must be on the Court TV live stream app. Let me see if I can get it on Court TV. Hold on. Let me go to Court TV live stream. Live stream. Let's see what we got going on here. Live TV. It's saying we'll be right back. Hey, our welcome back to Court TV Live. I'm Ted Rollins. Glad to start off another week with you. No, a no. new trial uh, out of the state of Michigan. The I don't know where it's at. It's not here. Nobody's got it on their McCallum. channel. She's accused of killing her husband, Robert, back in 2002. It took investigators 13 years to Does anybody have a link to the press conference? Husband's charred remains. And by I'm on Court TV. Let me go to gone. WFLA. Ended up getting arrested in Italy. Prosecutors say McCallum killed her husband and then enlisted the help of others to dispose of his body in a metal box. Okay, well, McCallum's if for daughter. any reason, that's a crazy case, right? If for any reason we get the um, link, if somebody wants, if one of my mods want to throw the link down in the chat here on um, in YouTube, please do so, but I can't find anybody that's live streaming it right now that I can see. 
Yeah. Well, I noticed the guy whenever he came into the dentist, uh, the dentist, uh, dentist strain, the Riley strain case. And at the end, you know, he, they were had the law enforcement gave the press conference. The parents gave the press conference. He's like, he's got to get there for, for his two seconds to let everybody know if media is interested in just doing a standoff press conference with him and him alone, he's happy to organize that. And I'm like, OK, so you're concerned about our clicks and views while you're grandstanding in front of the camera. Got it. Got it, Mr. Flag. Got it. Um, I'm happy to work with you, but, um, just, just, just know I, I, you don't owe me. I owe you nothing. Um, I'm, I'm giving my, I'm spending my money to go out there and search for this man. And I'm not going to be sitting there and having a pissing contest with the Cajun Navy. I'm not doing it. It ain't happening. It ain't happening. They stay out of my way. I'll stay out of their way. It's pretty simple. Uh, we still are going to respect the work that they do because they do natural disasters all over the place. The one thing I don't like doing is the pissing contest. And just like that asshole was, that one in that poofy um, orange jacket that was out at um, the Idaho 4, and he was a photographer out there, and he didn't know who he was walking up to. He thought it was just some some little girl. I don't need to get... Okay, hold on. Let me get, let me get Phoenix up out of here. I don't even know how Phoenix is in here. Phoenix, can you just please get out of my channel? Like, I don't want you here. I don't like you. I think you are the biggest piece of shit on tick our twitter like i don't like you i seriously don't like you can you just leave leave me alone quit stalking me can you do that why don't you go why don't you go get your 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 bff sf why don't you give him one of those jobs pucker up baby not professional first mistake first mistake um, oh, let me just go find Phoenix. I just need to find her and just block her. I'm so sick of this bitch. If people have a problem with the way I'm talking, oh, well. Can you just, you know, can you just block me, Phoenix? I, I mean, I will find you on Twitter and block you. You know, I will be happy. I'm, I'm happy to do that because I'm going to go through here and find your comments. And I, I'm going to be happy to block you, but I just prefer you being an adult, which I know you're not going to do because you're fucking basket, your basket case. But I'm going to ask you one time and one time only stay off my channel, get out of my Twitter, quit following me, quit watching me, quit reporting back on me. Okay. I'm not your kid. You don't own me. If you don't like my shit, get the fuck out. Pretty simple shit. Pretty simple shit. The only rule is here not to be a dick, and the only person that can't do that is some twat on Twitter. <sighs> dumb, dumb bitch. Okay, so let's get back to Sebastian and the fact that I don't answer to anybody. Oh, watch this be the Hold on a second. This is Betty. Betty. This Who's is this? Linda Lou. No, oh, Linda Lou. Pray for me. <laughs> I thought you might need a break. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what was so funny? I, I was thinking it was Phoenix. And I'm like, please don't tell me, Phoenix. Don't tell me you're going to make me cuss you out live. I, I'm like, I'll... <laughs> I said that poor girl needs a break. Bless her heart. <laughs> it's just stupid shit all day long. These people can't control themselves. Like, if you don't like it, why comment? Just move on. Like, they're so well, that's stupid. Tr that's true. I was sitting here thinking, uh, they said that they did, they do a five mile radius of the, uh, uh, from his uh, Sebastian's house. I think it was a five mile radius. Yeah. If they had, if they think that uh, people can believe that that child went out and started walking or anything, that poor boy's feet would be all cut up and stretched and everything. I don't think he's got out there. And but you know who is walking. cut up and scratched? His stepfather. Yeah, I mean he don't don't like to walk on hardly anything because he's afraid, you know. And his if he goes over rocks, his feet would be cut up with rocks and. I don't think he's got out there and done anything like that. Yeah, I don't yeah, either. I think he's altruistic like that. I think Sebastian. I think Sebastian is um, 
I think he's gone. I think something happened. I think, I you know what I too. think it is? I think Chris came home. Uh, he either soiled himself. He didn't do something or, uh, or Chris didn't want to deal with him and he got angry and something ensued. And it sounds like Chris probably, I mean, the, the markings on his arms look like he was holding something this away. So I have to think, you know, around the neck or something like that. And he just didn't realize what he was doing. Like I said, most of these things, mm -hmm. when things like this happen, they don't mean for them to happen. They just, they, they, they lose control of themselves in an, in an rage. And when you're enraged, you can do just about anything. Yeah. But I was thinking about, you know, him getting out and walking. I don't think that boy walked. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's what the parents want us to think, that he walked out of that house and, but his father's making sure we know he does not leave that house without shoes. Yeah. I feel sorry for him. I watched him yesterday on JLR's show. He had hurt his arm. They uh, put it in a sling and everything. And he's a holler. And he said he had blisters on his feet where he's walked so much. Who? The daddy. Oh, that's probably why he's getting the mean, cage. So that's, that's why the they said that, that uh, Cajun was going to come in and work today. So he could I take respect a day what off. they do. I just don't respect how they're talking to everybody. They don't control yeah. people. They don't control me. They don't control other people. And this thing that they think that they've got this, this, um, you know, no, I don't, mm -hmm. I don't do that. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Yeah, um, that's freedom of the press. I mean, media, you can't shut them down like that. And regardless. not only that, but you're you're out with News Nation on your boat with on a yeah. search, and then you're talking about everybody else. Oh, so you're in the control of who can film and who can't in America? Yeah. And these are law enforcement, ex-law enforcement agents? Okay. Yeah. Mm -mm. But they said that the daddy met with the law enforcement, and I think with Cajun today sometimes, uh, this morning, for them to say where they're going to start at, check it mm -hmm. and everything. But, I mean, like I said a while ago, I said they they left town just like the uh, Billy Joe and... Lay law, they, they went out and made and parted and everything while they was digging in the uh, landfill. Yeah. For a it's funny uh, how landfill. parents, how parents that are guilty versus parents that are innocent, how polar opposite their re their realities and their reactions are. Yeah. It's pitiful. Well, honey, I'll let you go. I think your mind is clear now. <laughs> <laughs> from all that havoc that's going on. <laughs> we love you, Linda Lou. I love you too, baby, and God bless you, honey. You too. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Gotta love our coffee crew. Gotta love our coffee crew. They correct the ship quick. They correct the ship quick. So, yeah, it's, it's just one of those things. I'm not going to stay on here much longer. We're already over an hour, and I did already produce a 40-some minute video this morning from TikTok that you guys got to see. So, um, I'm going to be watching and monitoring. Um, oh, I've been, okay. Well, I'm so happy you're here. God bless you. Thank you for being the newest member and the newest subscriber to the Bullhorn Betty channel. Don't forget to check me out in everywhere else. I know if you're on, if you're on YouTube, you got to be on Twitter. You got to be on Instagram. You got to be on TikTok, right? I'm on all those. I'm actually going to be starting to build, uh, the Patreon, uh, side of things where we're going to be a little more, uh, I think I'm going to do a personal one-on-one -on, -one, um, on there like once or twice a week. Um, probably, I don't know, I'm going to roll that out over the next um, at next quarter and see where that um, that goes. So we'll, we'll get that rolled out. So for those that want to try some stuff, I'm not really the Discord person. I never understood Discord. Um, I hear there's a lot of people on it. So it's just... This is Betty. Hi, Betty. This is Audrey. Hi, Audrey. How are you doing, my love? I'm all right. Um, I was just wondering um, where he had to switch sites. Do you think it's possible that they packed up and went to like closer to his job site? Because she said she used to do that when Sebastian was with his dad. Yeah, well, it sounds like he's working local. They're not letting him back on the job in Memphis. His his boss in Memphis told him not to come back until he get everything squared away. He's been uh, working with uh -huh. a friend that's been uh, giving him some jobs, some local jobs there. He's been a uh, friend's let him kind of help him on a couple of jobs for money. But his the Memphis job, he hasn't been back to. They told him not to come back. Uh -huh. 
all right. I just, I, I can't imagine like that. I can't imagine what that dad's going through. He's, he's, I have a child that has, yeah, I know. I, I, I have a child with autism and you know, they're very different. You have to discipline them a little different. They understand things different. They learn things different. But at the end of the day, I love my child so much. I would do anything for him. And it seems kind of like Seth, but I just, I couldn't imagine going through that, knowing that my ex is very suspiciously doing things. And I just, I, I, my heart goes up for Seth. I think everybody stands with Seth at this point. I think we're, we're seeing a big bright light, you know, um, around the proud foots. It's, I can't imagine. Let me ask you this. If you had nothing to do with your child's disappearance and a law enforcement told you to sit your ass at home, let them stand up, what would your response be? Don't use it. I would absolutely <laughs> tell them to go to hell and I would go out searching for my child. Exactly. I think we I think we're all like that. So when we hear that they can't go out and search because law enforcement told them to sit at home, but they have but they're they're allowed to That's go out to, to eat and they're allowed to go out and pack up their RV and leave the the immediate area. It just it, okay, but it's okay for the dad to search, but not the mom and stepdad. It seems like obviously they're suspects. They don't want them probably searching. I wouldn't want them searching. No, uh, but I, I wouldn't mean, want what them if they're leaving. Going out and, right. What if they're out there compromising evidence? You don't know that. Yeah, but with them leaving, we don't know where Sebastian is. How do we know we're not? They're not doing that right now. That is very true. Unfortunately, it's very true. Yeah, it takes a special heart to be a parent of a special needs child. It really does. It takes a special heart to do that. And I honestly, seeing the way that the stepdad acts and just his whole demeanor. I wouldn't want him anywhere near my child. Yeah. And he seems the way my child responds would, would be completely horrible around that man. Mm -hmm. Well, he's it, been married five well. times. So he obviously has intimacy and, um, um, long-term connection issues because obviously he's, he's got some behaviors that run women off. I mean, a good guy doesn't, isn't married five times. You know, we all get, distracted sometimes. I mean, I've been divorced once, but it was my own fault. Like I, it was a one night stand that never left. I mean, I should have known better. Right. Um, I won't make that mistake again. <laughs> <laughs> See, you do learn from mistakes. <laughs> you do. You I just be... think that the oh. proud foots are total pieces of shit right now, to be honest with you. I think we all do. I think we, and, and, and I, I, you know, my gut feeling was spot on. I should have trusted it. I doubted it with the um, behavior panel, but you know, it's a lesson learned that um, we've got to really trust our guts in situations like this. And something was screaming out to a lot of people. A lot of people in my chat knew their story didn't make sense. The one thing I love about your channel is even though sometimes we differ in opinions, all opinions are welcome. Yeah. And that's one thing that I love about your show. Yeah. We like, well, I like diversity and I like to have, I like to debate the, the, the facts, you know, of the case. And not only that, I think with the diversity of people's opinions and, and theories of what happened, it opens up the box and allows people to think even further outside of what they thought. Like there's all the times that I'm thinking it's one way and somebody will come in here and bring something up and it's like the light bulb goes off on your head and you're like, why didn't I think of that? And, and that's what that's what these channels do. That's what the chats do. You know, they help us think further past our own uh, minds and our own tunnel vision. And um, I, I and you don't get that if everybody's parroting you. Well, I wish you luck in Tennessee. Thank I will be watching. Be awesome. I just it. God bless you. That's all I have to say. And if my son, God forbid, were ever you know, to need assistance being found or whatever. I'm, I'm just going to call the Lohan Betty. <laughs> <laughs> I love you. Make sure you call them. Right. We always have to report the crime. Uh, I'm going to call them first. I'll, I'll be right <laughs> behind them. 
I'll call them first because they're closer, but then I'll call Bullhorn Betty. There you go. All right, Audrey, you have a great day. Happy Monday. God bless. You too. Uh -huh. You too. Bye. Well, Audrey snuck that in there. Well, it's nice to see you. I love hearing. I love hearing um, people talk about these cases. That's why we open the phone line up. But you know what? It's a great time to brainstorm. You know, there's no stupid answers when we don't know. We don't know. You know, putting throwing everything on the table and seeing what sticks. This is the perfect time and place to do that. You know, perfect time and place to do that. All right, guys, we're at the top of the hour. I've got a lot of paperwork to do. I got some things that need to be filed before I leave town. And so I've got to get that stuff done today. I'm going to be monitoring this case. And you guys know if anything's breaking, I will be live. Make sure that you guys are subbed up to my TikTok. I have to be honest with you because of the format of TikTok, it's so much easier when things are breaking to go live on TikTok. You don't want to miss that. I will be sure to try to go live here soon, shortly thereafter. Uh, but if you want the up-to-date, most most quickest information, you're going to want to sub up to Bullhorn Betty on TikTok. And we will see you all soon. God bless you. Have a great Manic Monday. I know the week just started, but I promise you, in just a blink and a shake and a sneeze, I'm going to be saying TGIF. Go have a great week. Oh, don't forget to be fearless. If you see something, say something. An ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. And until next time, please be safe and kind to one another. And we say you are in control of yourself. You have a choice to be a piece of garbage or to be a winner, winner, chicken dinner. It's your choice each and every day how you wake up and proceed. God bless. As you wake up in the morning, you want to find the latest, greatest information about criminal cases and have an intuitive conversation about the suspects associated with these cases. Head over to the Bullhorn Betty channel on YouTube. Breaking news right here on the Bullhorn Betty channel. Welcome to the Bullhorn Betty Coffee Club. Enjoy your stay and enjoy your day.